So I would say, first of all, the race is not over. Yeah? So I wouldn't say it's now defined. For us as a global um, supplier, and ZF is the third largest automotive supplier in the industry, we see ourselves as a tech company. We have on our own 20,000 people in China working with Chinese customers. And of course, it's an opportunity as well to help them develop their portfolio. And I would see for the customers, end customers, it's an opportunity because you see it here clearly in Munich. Uh, that we have a broader portfolio to offer to the end customers. If you say the race is not over, is that because um, one should never underestimate the innovative power of German car makers? Yeah, you see, as we display here, much of that is happening under the hood. Us, for example, we present here a completely magnet-free, rare-earth-3 engine uh, electric uh, motor, and that means dependency on rare earths, and we all know that's part of the geopolitical turmoil, the supply chains, and the carbon footprint reduced in production by 50%. It's a huge advantage how we can drive the transformation with latest innovation and technology. And if you want, we are based in Germany as well. The ideas came from Germany. So innovation will be the part of the game. And this race is going on. Um, if you look at, uh, perhaps it's interesting to get your take on, on how quick uh, the Chinese car manufacturers could actually evolve. Um, uh, what, in your view, is the reason for that? I believe that China is a very large market. But remember, for uh, European car makers, it's as well a very attractive market, and they have high volumes there. And this market is different from other markets because the customers are younger. So customers are younger as an average, and they are technology lovers. And therefore, uh, much of the innovation is driven there by an end customer demand. And you can clearly see that in entertainment, you clear can see it in electronics, architectures, etc. Um, let me bring you back to what you bring here to the fair, because it, I think it's quite interesting to see that it's possible to actually, through innovation, cut down the dependency on uh, some of these rare commodities. Um, is that just the beginning in your view? I think we are at the starting point of the development of the electrification in a way. Yeah? There's so much more to come. And if you look at what we are presenting here, it's a world premiere of this electric motor as I said, which is magnet-free. If you had asked a couple of months ago or a couple of years ago, people would have said impossible or if you want to do something like this, the engines will grow in size and weight. And what we present here completely rare earth free and it's the same size, even a little bit smaller, it's the same weight and most probably at the same cost point. And what we achieve is uh, clearly easier supply chains, a reduction foot of the carbon footprint by 50%, and that's enormous. So we can solve a lot of our challenges by technology. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.